I'm Colt Stevens from Horseshoe Farms, and today we're going to be talking about the IMI Uzi Carbine. Um, this is quite a rare gun. Um, we're going to be talking about the gun behind the legend. Um, you see this, this gun right here very often in movies, but rarely have we had an opportunity to see such a, such a gun as this. Very famous. If you've watched a lot of the uh, 80s and 90s uh, movies, um, you'll definitely recognize this. This is a very uh, sought after, very well known uh, firearm. Um, and we actually have the chance to see one in person today here on, uh, on our channel. Um, this one was actually a customer to read in. He had, uh, I think he actually had two of these, but he wanted to part with one of these to, uh, to kind of tone out his collection. And uh, so he traded this one in, and we were very fortunate that he did. It's not every day you see one of these. This is certainly a rare firearm. So we're going to go over um, this model in particular. This is the IMI Uzi uh, carbine, um, carbine 16 inch. Um, this is still 9mm uh, Luger or Parabellum, whichever you prefer. Um, 16 inch, of course, this is a, legally a rifle. Um, because of the barrel length. Um, and this is exceptionally rare. I mean, I think they, we have it on here, they imported about 80,000 of these um, through 1980 to 89, I believe it's the time frame. But you really don't see a lot of these, and when you do, they're insanely expensive. Um, they don't, there's not a lot of these commercially made now. Um, of course, reproductions, but not going to be the authentic IMI, um, Israeli military industries. Um, this is the official. Um, this is not a clone. This is not a copy. This is the actual IMI Uzi. Um, so with that, we'll go over some of the features. Um, this one, of course, has a 30-round magazine inserted. They're all vertical. There's no like curved magazines or anything like that. We'll go through the features and then we'll showcase the firearm itself. So this is a 16 inch barrel, as I said, it's a rifle. Um, it actually ships with, from the factory, a shorter barrel. Um, they call this a faux barrel. Now, if you look through here, there is actually rifling in this barrel. So they market this as a display barrel. Now, whether I would be inclined to put this in there, I probably wouldn't because being that it's rifled, it looks fully um, capable of being shot. If you look at the factory barrel, the factory barrel is almost pristine. This one has a lot more wear than the factory barrel, if that tells you anything. So uh, I would not put that in there because that is probably an NFI, NFA violation. Now if you wanted a short barrel rifle, um, form one one of these into a short barrel rifle, then have at it. Um, but as it is right now with it being a 16 inch rifle, I would not put that barrel in there because it could be construed as an NFA violation. So keep that in mind. They, they ship it with it. They call it a faux barrel. Um, it looks like you could shoot it with the faux barrel. So be warned that they do do that and, uh, don't just put it in there cause they see you can, uh, be aware of the laws if you intend to do that. Now this one actually came with four magazines. It's got one of the 30 rounders, the one I've already shown you in it. These are 25 rounders, ships with three of these, it looks like. And these appear to be original Uzi magazines. These ones are actually marked in five round increments. It's got the 10, the 15, the 20, and the 25. So this is a 25 round magazine. Finally enough, the 30 doesn't have any increments on it. It just is about 30 is what we estimated. Um, it could be a 35. It looks like a 30 though, if I had to guess. Um, this one in particular, when we bought this from the, the guy that traded in, he had this uh, aim point mount with it. This is not factory, this is a much later edition. Um, much newer than the gun. This is probably post 2000 if I had to guess. And this one actually has a, uh, appears to be a period correct sling. It's got an older um, swivel sling here. Um, two point, nothing really fancy. Um, it's got a little bit of age on it. It's probably about 80s, 90s, somewhere around there. So it's about, about correct for this firearm. 
we'll keep going on the feature here. It does have the quick change locking system. So I touched on the barrel. Uh, I'll show you here. It's got, you press this button down and you can actually twist this off. We'll do that right now. This pulls right off. Got your locking lug. This just pulls right out. That's pretty cool. So if you wanted, you could put the hoe barrel on there, but I wouldn't recommend it. That was, that, that'd be how you do it. Put it back in, you just, it's uh, it's got a shoulder right here, so it can only go in one way. You'll see this lug right here that matches up with the threads down here. Once it's in it, you'll notice right off. We'll go ahead and tighten this back down. When it gets close to the end, you'll have to push down that little button right there to get it really tight in there. You don't want it flopping around or anything like that. Once that's in, this is, and they're pretty solid. It's not moving at all. It's a, it's a pretty cool system they devised here. The Israelis really knew what they were doing when they made this. I don't know if all Uzis are like that. Um, I know they've been around since like the 50s to 60s. Um, this being a later 80s model. I don't know if that's an improvement, but if they've always had that, that's very ingenious. That's that's a good system they got going there for the Uzi. Especially if you get into fully automatic things. Um, the pre-70s models, pre 1986. Um, Group Industries made some fully automatic ones of these that were sold on the US civilian market that are still in the registry. I think I looked up this figure, it was around 100 or so that are on the NFA registry. So you could get some pretty high volume of fire. Um, well, of course not nowadays because ammo is so expensive, but back in like February, if you had a bunch of nine millimeter, you had a full auto Uzi. That's a good day at the range right there. But of course that's gonna wear out your barrel really quick, um, shooting thousands upon thousands of rounds through one of these things. So they, uh, they were really good about giving you the option to change out the, the barrel if you wanted um, to a newer, more rifled barrel once you wear the rifling out on your existing barrel. I don't know the shelf life on these barrels. I'd probably guess, depending on if you're shooting like plus bees or anything like that, probably 10,000 rounds um, is probably a safe estimate. Maybe even a little more depending on what you're shooting. Um, of course, if you're shooting a whole high volume of fire all at one time, that's going to accelerate your wear. So you do need to be careful about that. Semi-auto, probably not going to get that much volume out of this. Um, at least not that quickly. There's a little bit of heating and cooling in between. So you probably get pretty good life out of these barrels, if I had to guess. A lot more than a full auto. So we'll keep going. Um, this has a manual safety. It's got the manual safety right here, right above the grip. It's a uh, grip mounted right here. Push this back and forth. It's really stiff. It's not been used a whole lot. There it is. One interesting thing to note about these are when the safety is on, see if we can show it, this doesn't pull back. So the safety has to be off in order to pull this and it's super heavy. Get this here. Pretty hefty on that that pull. So as well as the manual safety, you also have a grip safety here in the back. This I believe only controls the trigger. There's nothing with the slide you have to do there. You'll see it right here. This this push right here. That's your grip mounted safety uh, for your trigger. So next we have the top cover is removable. So if you're going to do maintenance on this one, we'll open this up here. It's got a push right here um, by the rear sight. Pull this off. This comes right off the uh, lever included, the charging lever. So we'll see. You can see this is the internals right here. If you've ever worked on anything uh, like an Intertech 22, you'll notice right off this is very similar. Um, Intertech definitely copied the Uzi. The Uzi probably came first, if I had to imagine. But this here, if we can get it, comes out. 
through this here. Got some springs there on your bolt. You can see the internals right here. You got the magazine right there, barrel right there. It does have a feed ramp, which is very nice. Got some, it, it's, the actual gun itself is very simple. Um, the, uh, the internals are, I mean, you, you would think from the outside the gun is a lot more intimidating on the inside than it is, but it's it's a very simple system. It's really just a cover on the outside. Uh, there's not a whole lot to go wrong on the inside. Um, they knew what they were doing in Israel when they made this. It's a very good system they got here. Let's see if we can get this back together real quick. There it is. Very simple to clean and take apart. This just kind of indexes in the front. You'll notice when it goes right in. Just kind of slap it down. And there it is. You'll hear the snap and it, the cover's back on. We'll see if we did everything right here. We'll pull this out. Yep. We're all back together. So cleaning is very simple on this. If you ever want to take it apart for maintenance or you want to take it apart for cleaning, super simple. There's not a whole lot to do there. So next we have the folding stock. So this is the folding stock model. Not all of them are folding stocks. Some of them had fixed wood stocks, things like that. This one is folding. So we'll see if we can get this. Got a push button here. So this folds in like this. And you kind of squeeze this back section. It's two piece folding stock. Let's we'll see if we can get this. So this folds up, this folds down. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it locked, but this is what it essentially looks like right here. This kind of comes up a little further. There is a way to lock it. I don't know right off how to do that. Um, but you can see this is the package that you get right here. So you can get a pretty compact, especially with that short barrel in there if you ever wanted to SBR it. Um, that is definitely a cool package if you have a short, short Uzi. They do also offer these in pistol. Um, of course, not with a stock. You'd have to get this tax stamp for that. Um, they do have brace models. Um, but I think those are going to be clones. I don't know if IMI or IWI is still putting them out. That'd be something for a little more research. Uh, this being an older one, it's cool that it still has that ability to be folding stock. Of course, a Form 1 is not a big deal if you don't ever want to go through that 200 bucks and about a month wait right now, um, from what I understand. And even e-file, uh, that makes it super simple. So moving on. Um, so this is the Type B model right here. Um, they imported these in two different types, uh, the Type A and the Type B. Type A was from 1980 to 83 and was exactly the same as the regular um, full auto um, that you see um, the military using back then in Israel. Um, and the Type B is from 83 to 89. There were a couple changes they have on there. Um, I believe it was a firing pin safety and maybe even a grip safety. Um, those two things they added to it between them. Overall, um, Type A plus B, um, they imported about 80,000 in total. Um, and these are all the semi-auto. Um, you can tell if your gun started as a semi-auto by whether your serial number here begins with the prefix SA, and this one does. So it, it has never been a full auto at any point, um, as far as the factory is concerned. So that's about it for this one. Um, it's definitely a cool package. Um, very simple from what I, what I looked at. I was expecting it to be a lot more complex than it is, but it's really cool whenever you get a, a firearm that you've seen all the time in movies and you actually get to handle it and see what it's all about. Um, it's kind of like an AR when you break down an AR for the first time and you think, wow, that's really simple for as much as I see that and has, what it can do. Um, it's a lot of power in a little package, really. Um, 
It's a really cool gun. So thanks for watching. Please check the link in the description. Um, this one is actually available on GunBroker right now. I'll put a link to the item number. You'll be able to go on GunBroker and search that item number if you're interested in getting your hands on this one. Um, this one is available for viewing in store if you ever want to come by and see it. Just uh, see if we still have it. That would be the thing. I don't expect it to last long, especially nowadays. But, uh, thanks for watching. Please uh, check the link in the description and please like and subscribe.